Hey everybody, Linda aka The Gamer Girl here, and today I have with me Jason Elliott. This is the Glitchy Gamer Podcast, a podcast that glitches onto the channel every now and then. You might have seen Jason every now and then if you're a tabletop gamer. He was the TSR from 2011, and the reason why I have him on here is because a lot of misinformation has been going around about his company and Jason, and so we want to clear up everything and just ask the person himself, the one that's been getting all the information. We can just ask him. So thank you, Jason, for joining me today. Hey, yeah, thanks for having me. So let's start from the beginning, just for anybody who's never heard of TSR before. When did you get the trademark for TSR and how did you find out about it? Okay, so I mean, for anybody who doesn't know, I won't go too much into the history of the original real TSR that, you know, Gary Gygax started in the yeah. 70s. But basically that was a company that was started for Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, well, not for that, but, you know, that's what they're famous for. And then in, I don't know what year, like the nine, early 90s, uh, they were going to go out of business. And so Wizards of the Coast came and saved them. They basically, you know, paid off their debts and took over the company and saved Dungeons and & Dragons. And now Wizards makes D&D. So since the 90s, you know, Wizards just hadn't used the name anymore. They stopped using it um, on any products. And in, like, 2011... I just thought, you know, what would it would be funny? Like, what does is the trademark still around? You know, I was doing a D and D podcast at the time, and I just registered it for fun, you know, just to see if we could get it right. Did you um, get? And then when it, did you get any hate for doing that from any of the community nobody members? Nobody knew we were doing it. No. Nobody knew we were doing it yet oh. because we just were like, oh, well, what would happen? And then you know, I got it, and I'm like, well, what do I do with this thing, right? So um, I knew Luke and Ernie Gygax, which was Gary Gygax's kids, uh, and I went to them and I. I said this thing, I got the TSR name, but I don't think I should do anything with it by myself because who the hell am I, right? Yeah. I'm some podcaster. So um, they were like, yeah, let's do something with it. And uh, so we got together, the three of us, and then we also got Tim Cask, who is the uh, guy who started the Dragon magazine, which was, you know, the, you know, whatever. Uh, and I said, why don't we make a magazine? Uh, because that way we're not competing with other games. We can just kind of, you know, give props to everybody in their games and stuff. So we did uh, Gygax Magazine. So, yeah, so we decided to get together and start Gygax Magazine, which I think you can probably see now. Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, we didn't get any hate at all because it was, you know, three things, basically. So, first of all, I was uh, starting the company with Gary Gygax's two sons that were most involved with the game. Mm -hmm. um, he has you know, more kids, but they were the ones that were most involved. Um, and then also Tim Cask and other people were involved at the beginning, like Frank Frank Menser, who wrote the original Red Box. So, you know, it was really a, a crew of creatives from the original uh, TSR. Uh, then the second one is because we weren't doing anything that was like trying to sell a game that would compete with anybody else's. We just wanted to do something that would be promoting the hobby in general. And I think the most important thing was we never pretended to be anything other than what we were. We never said we were the old TSR. We, we went out of our way to say we were a new company. Uh, we made up a new logo that had nothing to do with the old ones. You know, we just wanted to point out that we were only using the name as a tribute. And so I think that's why people warmed up to us right away because we had the right people and we had the right attitude, I hope. Yeah, it, it was, and also you didn't just like go in, you actually asked for a couple people to help out. So it wasn't just like you showboating at all so it wouldn't have made any sense it, it would have been I, I feel like it would have been really um disingenuous for me to pretend to be part of the old company because i mean i wasn't there you know yeah. so why would i pretend it yeah so let's fast forward to now of all the situation that's going on for sure. for sure um can you explain like what happened with the filing date to anybody who didn't know what was going on I think I better give a little super basic explanation of how a trademark works. So with trademark law, it's different from copyright. It's different from patents. They're complicated things that most people, you know, why would anybody think about these in their daily lives, right? But the only reason a trademark exists is to keep you from getting confused with another company. Mm -hmm. And so you can go to the trademark office and you can register your name so that they have it absolutely definitely in their register, but you don't have to do that. If you're using the name first and you can show that you were there first, you have what's called seniority rights. Um, there's a whole complicated thing about, you know, how many states are you in or whatever, but the point is we were, um, first of all, we had it trademarked. And second of all, we'd been using it in all 50 states because we sell things all around the United States. So what happened was 
I didn't know that after you've been using a trademark for like seven years or something, you actually have to file another thing saying that you're still there. Okay. Um, and I don't know if like my registered agent email didn't like I didn't see it or whatever. You know what? I, I didn't see it. <laughs> I mean, that's really just what it is. I didn't see it. Um, and I didn't even know that it had happened until somebody, you know, emailed me and they're like, hey, this guy is, you know, telling everybody that he registered the trademark and he's telling everyone if they want to put it on their stuff, they can just do it. And he doesn't care. So that's how else. that's how you found out about it was through postings. Some friend of mine must have like, you know, texted me or something. I don't remember exactly who. So at any point did the TSR that is in Lake Geneva go to you and go, hey, let's merge together? At any point did they ask that? No. Um, I called the guy who was doing it because I basically figured maybe he just doesn't know, right? Like I looked up his name, never heard of this guy. You know, I've been in i don't know whatever gaming scene for a decade now i feel like i know anybody who's doing stuff especially in the old school world so when i didn't recognize his name i'm like well i don't know who this guy is so i got his number and i called him up and i just thought i'd nicely explain we're already doing a thing and so you can't do a thing and so if you want to do a thing we can talk about it uh, and that you know the call didn't go too well you know um and so I just kind of let it go at that point because I figured a lot of people have big ideas. Like lots of people are, you know, they talk a big game and they say they're going to do something and then it fizzles out. So I figured let's just wait and see if it's going to fizzle out. Uh, so that was really kind of where I left it at the beginning. And it wasn't until, I don't know, really recently when uh, then it became the whole thing like, yeah, we're going to do the museum. and tell everybody to put their name on put this on everything and do you want to buy a t-shirt with this logo on it and hey we're whatever that um at that point i actually called ernie you know ernie guy because you know he's an old friend of mine now um we've been friends for well over a decade and i was just like you know what's going on what's the deal with this and uh he got me and justin together on the phone and he said let's talk it out and at that point, I was still trying to be, you know, let's play nice, right? Yeah, of course. So I said, what do you want to do? You want to run a museum? You want to do this kind of stuff? Maybe we can just sort of carve out our our separate um, areas, and that way people won't get us confused. Because I don't want you putting something out that people think came from us. You know, what if it's not the kind of thing we would put out? So uh, we tentatively agreed at that point. He said, well, I could license it back to you for like a dollar or 10 bucks or something like that. And I'm just like, what I was thinking to myself was, well, I mean, that's probably easier than starting drama. Like, I just want to make games. I don't want to start drama. So if we can keep things clear and then maybe somewhere down the line, I'll switch the name because, you know, I don't think it'll go. I don't think it'll work forever to have two companies, you know, with the same name, even if they're old school and we're not. Um, and so that's where we were going to do it. And then just as I was thinking about the offer that he made, um, that's when everything kind of blew up. And, uh, you know, uh, I just was like, hold on, we can't be associated with the kind of uh, behavior that we're seeing. And so that's kind of where we are now. Did they ask you, was it okay to put your stuff on the museum's website? Uh, sort of. They didn't, we never had an agreement or anything. What they did was they, like I said, for a minute there, we were talking about coexisting. And so he said, hey, I bet we can sell a lot of Top Secret if we coexist. And I was like, okay, you know, I don't mind selling some stuff. So, you know, it's Ernie. I trust him. I've known him for a while. Um, so I was like, yeah, we can probably do that. I didn't, you know, sign anything or give them permission to do it. It was just more kind of a verbal, yeah, let's, let's try it out. And again, this is before anything, you know, kind of exposed itself. Okay. Did anybody at TSR offer you a job to work for them? They don't have any money. How could they? <laughs> they're not I... a real company. They're, 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 a, they're an LLC um, that bought a house to put some stuff in, and they're not, you know, no, they don't have employees as far as I know. It's not, you know, a company. They don't, they don't really, no, no. And besides, I've got a job. I got a great job. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't be needing that. So, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do with the company and all the stuff that has TSR on it? 
Yeah. So, um, well, the cool thing is that now, uh, you know, it's kind of forced our hand. So basically stuff happened. They said things that we were really against, you know, it just kind of, it kind of horrified me to be associated with the kind of, uh, thinking and behavior that was being spread around, you know, it just goes against everything that my whole life has been about. I mean, since ever, you know, so, um, at that point, we made our decision really quickly that we were going to ditch the name, you know, that it's it's not worth a fight. Um, yeah, it's something that if I wanted to spend the money on the lawyers, we could go and we could say, here's our seniority rights. You know, our, my lawyer said we could go and get an injunction, basically stop them from doing it. And I was just like, this is not worth the fight, you know, because if I mean, at this point, let's say hypothetically that. I spent all the money to go after them and pulled the name back from them and all that stuff. What am I going to do with that name? It's got, it's, it's like sullied, you know, it's got this horrible reputation now and I, you know, it's, 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 I can't do anything with it. So we changed our name. So now we are Solarian games. Uh, it was a really cool break, you know, because the other people that had been working with me before, you know, we wanted to really be more of a partnership. So we're like, let's just be a three-way partnership, everything equal. Let's have this new company called Solarian. So we took all of the stuff, we've, we've transferred everything over, you know, all of our contracts, all of our IP, all of our, you know, inventory and stuff like that has been transferred over to the new company. Uh, so we're still making everything that we were before. And I'm going to, you know, be a little, little bit of a plug. Like this is our, no, go this for our it. flagship game. Right. So this is this is top secret. This is our flagship game. Big, you know, fun spy game. We are still publishing that as Solarian now. All the new stuff is going to have the Solarian logos on it. And the inventory we have from before, you know, it's got the TSR logos on it. That's fine. It was made by TSR. Um, we're selling things that were made by this other company and, and that's fine. So we'll we'll keep selling off the inventory that we have and it's great stuff when it sells out you know then hey and it's it's rare or something i don't know but you know all the new things will have solarian on them will you get in trouble for selling tsr it, it, or like are the, you fear do you fear like they're gonna do something they can't um well number one i i don't know like the legal terms for this or anything but there's basically this idea that you know when you're selling something that you have in your inventory you know like if like if i i don't know if i uh, cornflakes got in trouble and walmart kept selling cornflakes they're not going to get in trouble for it cornflakes might but walmart look they bought the stuff it's theirs they're selling it but aside from that yeah like i said we we do have seniority rights to tsr um so you know we we have the right to do whatever we want with it but i just don't think that from a um practical perspective and just a what everything real world perspective i just don't want to do to to go by that name as a company anymore but yeah, no, this, this is our, these are our games that we spent years building and, and making and manufacturing and we're selling them. Uh, do you have any big projects coming up for anything that people can look forward to as now you're a new company? Yeah, actually, thank you. Um, I was actually going to wait to announce Solarian until a little bit, until we had the first one actually out. Cause I thought, you know, let's introduce it with the product, but oh, well, it doesn't always work that way, but <laughs> yeah. the one I'm... <laughs> The one I'm most excited about right now, we're, we're doing some things that are a little bit more um, rules light, story game type stuff. So the first one we're, that we're putting out next is called Boombox. And in Boombox, basically, you, it, you pick your musical tribe, like do you want to be a goth or a punk or a b-boy or like a two-tone? And you want to basically rise to the top of your scene. So you can have like dance-offs or you can... Uh, you know, try to be like the coolest dresser and all that kind of stuff. And you're on your character sheet, you know, you can like fill out your outfit and you can uh, even make a mixtape. Um, and, you know, it's just a fun way to kind of live through like a pseudo 80s alternate kind of uh, underground world. And so that's the next thing we're doing. It's really a music based kind of thing. Um, what kind of die system is it going to be using? All D6s, it's a die pool. It's, it's really very much. Um, so basically what you do is like, let's say that Let's say that you're a b-boy, um, b-girl, okay. um, uh, and I'm a goth, right? So we decide to have a dance-off, and you've got a certain number of dice in your pool, and you're like, I'm going to use this many of them for my, for my dance skills, and I'm going to use this many for just my, like, my cool outfit that I'm wearing for this. And then I'm going to be like, well, as a goth, we don't have as many cool dances, so I'm going to put them all into my outfit. 
and then we just roll for the pools. Whoever wins the pool basically takes away from the other person's cool points. And, you know, you're kind of going back and forth like that throughout the game. Are you going to do a collector's box of any, like, special edition stuff like that? Um, okay, so, yeah. So, Boombox is going to be a real simple thing. I initially started creating it for Kickstarter's um, February Zine Fest, and it just, you know, didn't get done. So, I thought, let's wait with that. But um, we don't have any, bo any, like, special collector's edition stuff planned right now. I could see going back and doing, like, a book of Gygax magazine or something, because we're almost sold out of those, and I think people still want to read it. Mm -hmm. But... The truth is, mostly what I want to focus on is not trying to be like, what's the biggest, fanciest thing we could do? I'd rather do a lot of smaller things, find out what people have fun with. Because um, we have a whole whole series called the uh, Pantheon series. I got one are... of those, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, you did, didn't you? Um, so the idea is they're five bucks, plus shipping, unfortunately. Um, and it's the, the idea is to get an a inexpensive, quick introduction to maybe a game system you haven't played before. I really like focusing on things that we can do quickly, that we can iterate with, and that um, we can find out what really works. And then if something gets big, then yeah, we can put out special versions of it if it gets big enough. Nice. Um, is there going to be a change in the website for you guys? Yes. Uh, so you can now go to solariangames.com. And uh, we, we, I had a whole big crazy time trying to switch over the Twitter and the Facebook, and I still haven't switched Instagram over because I couldn't find my password. <laughs> oh, no, I don't use it enough. Um, but then, yeah, so also for the websites, right now it's a little bit confusing as we move it across. Like solariangames.com has all of our games on it, and we've got about a dozen different products up there right now where you can buy most of them already. And then when you go to shop, it sends you over to our old store, which I've rebranded visually, but we still have to change the URLs. And we're not going to give up the URLs. I mean, you know, we'll just keep them and redirect them because we own those. Um, but yeah, so solariangames.com is the new website. Okay. Um, and the final question is, what do you want people to know about your company as far as like, who is the partners, who works for the company so that people can also find their work and anything that they're working on, they can go and, you know, grab some new stuff like modules yeah, or whatever yeah, they're doing. Yeah. Cool, thanks. So it's a three-way partnership, uh, Peter Bryant, James Carpio, and myself. And we've all worked on TSR together this whole time. So it's not like a new thing. It's just yeah. the three of us kind of saying, basically I was more like the boss with TSR, which is stupid because I'm not a good boss. I mean, I'm nice to people, but I'm not, you know, whatever, I'm not a boss, right? So I was like, this has to be a three-way partnership. And so we've also just brought all of our games together because Peter and James had their own side things before, uh, Chapter 13 Press and Studio 187. So they're rebranding their old stuff as Solarian. You can get all of it up on the site right now. And uh, I just kind of want everybody to know that it's three friends that are having fun making games. Um, you know, it's, it's not our day jobs. We've all got day jobs, but... It's, it's our passion, it's what we love, and we're just hoping that people can have fun. Thank you so much. And I'm going to drop the links to all of their websites so you can check it out for yourself and support them. We all need to support, you know, companies that are doing really good in this world that, hey, you never know. You might get something super rare. That's a plus. <laughs> So this is the Glitchy Gamer Podcast. Thank you so much, Jason, for chilling with me today. Thank you. Catch you later, everybody. We're glitching out. Linda, the gamer girl. She's here, she's playing games. Linda, the gamer girl. She's here, she's playing games today.